Father, that is the confession of our hearts, that you are worthy. We are who we are because of you. And we are very grateful this morning that you could bring us together just to worship you, praise you, lift your name, and hear from you. We therefore want to wait on you, dear Lord. Speak, we are listening this morning. For this is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Celebrate Jesus. And before you sit down, you know we come to church for many reasons. But I would want us in form of a song to confess this morning why we have come. And I want to ask that you project that song for us. We are not talking about anything new. Ancient words passed down to us. And I want to conf us to confess as we sing that song this morning. Amen. Holy words, long preserved for our world. In this world, there is a with God on high. Oh, One more time, holy words. Holy words, long preserved for our work in this world. There is a with God's own heart. Oh, let the ancient ones sing. Ancient ones, ancient.
message to the sea came to us through sacrifice. Oh, he the faithful ones of ancient words, ancient words, ever to changing me, changing me, and changing me, and changing you. We have come. I pray that is your attitude that this morning you, are, you will allow the word of God to change you as I allow the word of God to change me. We have come with open hearts. That is the attitude, the winning attitude in the house of God. I want to praise God for this opportunity to break the bread of life, the words, the ancient words, they are ancient yet ever true. And I'm so glad that the Lord has given me this opportunity. And I know that his word, may you receive your Rema word this morning. May you not live the same because you have come with an open heart. I also know that in this service this morning, we have two broad, two broad categories of people present. The first category you are pursuing the abundance of God. You have read in many places in the word of God and God talks of abundance. And you feel you are not yet there. You are pursuing that abundance. I also know there are some of us present here. You had maybe received the abundance. But right now you are very busy resisting the enemy who is trying to encroach. The enemy who is trying to encroach on your God-defined space. God had blessed you with health. All of a sudden you are airing. You are busy resisting that. So maybe you are looking for abundance, pursuing abundance. Or maybe you are resisting the encroachment of the enemy. I've got good news for you this morning. For both of us, for this purpose, Jesus came. To give you the abundance and to destroy the works of the enemy, the works that you are fighting this morning. For this purpose, Jesus came. Therefore, this morning, the secret, the open secret, is to receive the word, not the word of man, that ancient one. Receive it, run with it, it makes the difference. In the book of John chapter 21, verse 3 and 6, in New Living Translation, John 21, 3 to 6 says, Simon Peter said, this is after crucifixion and Jesus has been risen. And now the disciples are here. They are confused. They have not yet come into terms. They are counting the roses. They are picking the broken pieces. And it is in, in this situation, in verse 3 to 6, um, Simon Peter said, I am going fishing. That is Peter saying, I am going fishing. And the other said, we will come too, they all said. So they went, went out in the boat, but they caught nothing the whole night. Next verse. At dawn, Jesus was standing at the beach. But the disciples couldn't see who he was. He called out, fellows. Have you caught? Have you caught any fish? No. Okay. Let me read mine. The pace we are going, <laughs> they are losing me. At dawn, Jesus was standing on the beach, but the disciples couldn't see who he was. 
he called out, Pharaoh, have you caught any fish? No, they replied. Then he said, throw out your net on the right hand side of the boat and you will get some. So they did and they couldn't haul in the net because there were so many fish in it. The difference between the word of Peter and the word of Jesus, the word of man and the word of God, the two are different. When Peter told them he, he's going fishing and they said they go, they caught nothing the whole night. But when Jesus told them to go and throw the net on the right side, the Bible says they got so much they could not, they had to ask for help for them to remove the fish. What am I trying to say this morning? That it is the word of God that you need. The word of God is the define, it is the one that's making the difference. Which word are you pursuing? The disciples had, they had, they obeyed, they received. It is not enough to know. It calls for you to believe it and then you will receive it. So my prayer this morning, that the word of God that you will hear, it will not add at the hearing. You will hear, you will obey. And even if it is the very same thing you have been doing and it didn't work, when it is Jesus who has said, there will be a difference. It was the same sea, it was the same day. Okay, they had done it through the night, but it was continuous, it was in the morning. So it was the same. I don't think the fish were born, were hatched the same night and they grew. So the fish were there, but it mattered that they obeyed the word of Jesus Christ. This is because the word of God we know it is eternal, it is forever settled in heaven, it is living and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, and it can, the description can continue. So the word you receive, obey it, run with it, and you can be assured that God will honor his word. Having said that, I would want us to read from the book of John chapter 10, verse 9 and 10. John 10, 9 and 10. Remember I said I would want us to discuss very briefly on for this purpose Jesus came. Yes, I am the gate. Those who come in through me will be saved. They will come and go freely. The thief's purpose is to steal and kill and destroy. Hold it there. We can actually say that is the devil's mission statement. The devil's mission statement in your life is to steal that which God has given you, is to kill that which God has given you, is to destroy. That is the purpose. Thank God the verse does not end there. The next part of verse 10 says, this is Jesus who, was said, who said, my purpose is to give them rich and satisfying life. In New King James Version, it says, I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. So on one side, we have the enemy who is encroaching in your life. He wants to steal the salvation God has given you. He wants to steal the health God has given you. He wants to steal the children God has given you. He wants to destroy your business. That is what he wants to do. But Jesus, on the other hand, came for this purpose. That he may give you several things. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Salvation is one of the reasons why Jesus came. That you are, actually, that is the starting point. Life, life in abundance, life eternal. When we receive Jesus Christ, we receive hope and a hope for a home, eternal home. Therefore, I want to ask you this morning, have you received that salvation? Because that is the foundation. Upon this foundation, for this purpose, Jesus came that you may be saved. I like what it says in the book of Acts. It's only Jesus who saves to the utmost. 
When Jesus saves you, he saves you completely. He will save you in this world, preserve you in this world, and in the world to come, he will give you an eternal home. So, saved in this life, we receive hope. And in the world to come, we expect eternal home. So, I want to ask you this morning. Have you received that salvation? That is the starting point. Maybe you had received it. You don't know where it is slipped. Praise God, you are still on this side of heaven. Grace available this morning. You can be the object of the grace of God this morning. I therefore want to appeal to you this morning. You know for sure in your heart. The distance between you and Jesus seems all of a sudden. The gap is longer. Guess who has moved? Your guess is as good as mine. You have moved. But with the hearts open wide, he's saying you can come home. Therefore, this morning, are you there and you want to mend your ways with God? Or you have even never started, there is room for you in the house of God this morning. For this purpose, Jesus came to give you salvation. In verse 9, where we read in the book of John, Jesus said, I'm the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved. He will go in and out and find pasture. You get salvation, and as you move out and you come in, you will find pasture. You will find abundance. You will find your daily bread. God for us is word to perform it. We have just read that he told the disciples to throw in the net on the right side. When they obeyed, there was enough. He's a God of all seasons. Even COVID season, he is God. He is a provider. You can enjoy abundance. Are you listening to the instructions? Are you willing to be guided? You will receive pasture. You will receive abundance. In the book of Luke chapter 4, verse 18 and 19, maybe you can read it in New King James Version. This is Jesus introducing his purpose. He was introducing why he came to this world. Hey, Luke 4, 18 to 19. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. To proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the bride. To set at liberty those who are oppressed. To proclaim the acceptable ear of the Lord. In New Living Translation, the same verse, this is what it says. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. Are you tired of receiving good news, bad news? You don't know. You see a link, join this link, and you are wondering what next. Jesus came to bring the good news. He has sent me to proclaim that captives will be received, will be released. Are you listening to me this morning? And you are feeling you are a captive of the enemy. For this purpose, Jesus came to set you free. And my prayer this morning is that we can declare and say, that the net has been broken and we have escaped. That you can enjoy the freedom and you can stop being a captive of the enemy. Because for this purpose, and as we continue along, I want you to pick where it is, it is relevant to you and declare Jesus for this purpose you came. And then listen to the instructions. You obey, God is faithful. That the bride will see. It is Jesus who was describing what he has been sent by the Father to do. That the bride will see, that the oppressed will be set free, and that the time of the Lord's favor has come. Your time of favor has come. Why? Because Jesus has come, and this is his mission statement. To give you abundance, to set you free to make you a showcase of his grace that you can survive even in corona season to the glory of his name. 
So he brought us the good news. He brought us salvation. Have you received Jesus as your personal savior? For this purpose, he came. And this is the starting point. He wants your name to appear in his book of life. Is your name written in the book of life? Yesterday we went to a certain function. And you know the, in this era, there are restrictions of numbers. So they had said, only the invited will enter. So when we got there, thank God, we knew on one couple, the, the owners of the, the function. Majority of the other people don't know us. So we went and queued. You had to register at a certain desk. And then you give your name. They had the names of the people who were supposed to enter. So we gave our names and, and waited for our verdict. To know whether we are entering or we'll be told, sorry, your names are not here. And I guess it's just a rehearsal that God has a book. And only those whose names appear in that book will enter the kingdom. Therefore, this morning, is your name written in the Lamb's book of life? He came that he may give you and me freedom. So this morning, are you feeling trapped? Jesus came and paid for your freedom. You can demand it and tell him in your word, for this purpose you came that I may be free. Are you feeling trapped? You try. Thank God you are here. A sign that you have not given up. Don't give up. For this purpose, Jesus came. Are you here? You are feeling sick. Maybe psychological, emotional, mental, body. You are sick. For this purpose, Jesus came. He brought healing. It is you to define. Are you feeling soul sick? Or body sick? Or mentally sick? For this purpose, Jesus came to give you freedom, to give you healing. Yes, he enumerated the purposes for which he came. Favor. You are feeling you have no one to speak about your situation regarding that tender, regarding that issue. Receiving Jesus makes us his preferred choice. Did you hear what I said? Jesus makes you the preferred choice, the favor of the Lord. You can claim the favor of God. The Bible, the psalmist says in Psalms chapter 5 verse 12, that his favor surrounds me like a shield. When you receive Jesus Christ, the favor, his favor surrounds you like a shield. You know it, but have you believed it? It is going and believing, yes, I am walking here, and the favor of the Lord is upon me. And even heaven knows that I am favored of God. That's why I was chosen for heaven and eternity. So I want to ask you this morning, what do you need? Salvation, healing, freedom, favor. For this purpose, Jesus came. For you. This morning, I want you to forget there is anybody else in church. It is for you. The devil, one of the deceptions of the enemy is to make you think this one is for the selected few. If there are few, then I am among the few. If he's telling you it is for the, it is for the pastor or for your leader or for the worship team, excuse me, this one is for the few and I am the, among the few. For this purpose, Jesus came. For you. This morning, it is you to define which one that is a real issue this morning. When you know it, I want to ask you, do you know the promises of God regarding your issue this morning? Do you know the promises of God? Let it not add at the knowing. Do you believe it? Because it is those who know they believe it, then they will receive it. I pray that you will not only know, you will believe it, receive it. And sometimes it is okay to speak it back to yourself and say that I believe. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews, it is, it is you must believe that God exists. 
and that he is a rewarder of them that seek him diligently. Meaning, there are some people here, they pray, but in actual sense, they don't believe that God exists. Excuse me, no wonder you have not received. It is believing that God exists, believing that you are able to engage him one-on-one, -on -one, and believing that he is faithful and he can keep his words. Having said all that, there, is, there are many things that happen between the, the knowing, then you believe and you are awaiting for the manifestation. And God will always answer in one of the four ways. I'll just talk about the four ways and we'll be done. God may not always answer our prayers the way we would like, but he always answers prayer in one of the following four ways. Number one, and maybe you can project for us, James chapter 4 and verse 3. When, you when your request is not right, God says no. Hey, there's a conspiracy there. Let me, let me magnify, yes. You ask God for something. And do not receive it. Because you ask him with wrong motives. Out of selfishness or with an unrighteous agenda. So that when you get what you want, you may spend it on your <laughs> hedonistic desires. Hold it. What is, your agenda? what is the agenda of your request this morning? What is the agenda? What is the motive? That one, when the motive is wrong, when the agenda is wrong... God will say no. It is not just asking. It's not just knowing and then asking. God reserves the right how to answer it. Because he knows your agenda. He knows what you want. He knows. Some of us, he knows. He gives you that which you want. He will, that is the last time he'll ever see you in church. All of a sudden, that is the last time uh, he will see you reading the Bible, seeking the will of God. So to God, the agenda of your asking matters. So when your request is not right, God will say no. The second way that God will answer. When you are not right, God, when you are not right. God says, grow. You are not right. God says, grow. Maybe God wants to give you something. Maybe even a blessing so big you can't imagine it. But you are not ready for the responsibility. It could even cause stress in your life if he gave it to you. Do not stop praying. Keep reading, keep waiting. Galatians 4, verse 1 and 2. We are saying when we ask God, he may not answer immediately because as far as he's concerned, you are not ready for the responsibility. So he will wait for you to grow up. Could that be you have not yet received because he wants you to grow up? Now what I mean when I talk about children and their guardians is this. As long as the heir is a child, he does not differ at all from the slave, even though he is the future owner and must even though he is the future owner and master of all the estate, verse two. But he is under the authority of guardians and household administrators or managers until the date set by his father when he is of legal age. So some of the things we are asking God to give us, he is looking, he has had, but he wants you to take responsibility. He wants you to grow up. Opportunities favor the prepared. What have you done to accommodate the blessing you are seeking God to give you? Have you prepared for the blessing? Or God is, you are waiting on God and God is waiting on you. And maybe he's saying, grow up. You have to be mature. 
These kind of blessings are only for the mature. So it's upon you to ask yourself, assess, and find out, are you ready for the responsibility? The third way that the Lord will answer. When the timing is not right, God says, slow. So we have talked about the agenda, the motive, when the request is not right, he will say no. We have talked about when you are not right, God will tell you grow. And that day we are saying, when the timing is not right, God, will, God says slow. Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 3. For the vision is yet for the appointed future time. It hurries toward the goal of fulfillment. It will not fail. Even though it delays, wait patiently for it because it will certainly come. It will not delay. The time approaches. It is coming, but not yet. God wants to take it slow until you are ready to handle it. Growth often leads, needs to be paced. God is a God of process. That is why step by step, there are stages of life. No wonder Paul says, when I was a child, I thought like a child. But now that I'm grown up, I'll think like a grown up. God is a God of process. He wants us to grow. He wants us to wait. He wants, maybe you have been praying, God, I want the fruit of the Spirit, patience. I always um, thank God for, for teachers who, who insist you have to memorize. When I was in Form 1, I had a CRI teacher who, who made it mandatory for us to memorize Galatians 5.22. For the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. I've never forgotten. Pastor Kaunda, thank you. Your labor in the Lord is not in vain. When you insist, and I like, you have got very faithful followers. You have to start with the verse. John 3.16, and add with the verse John 3.16. And no wonder, the Bible says, train up the child, and even when they grow up, they will not forget. I have not yet forgotten. Almost 50 years down the line, I can still say the memory verse. God is a God of process. He wants us to grow. It will come. How well can you wait? You know, some of us have no grace of waiting. Some of us give up when it's just about to come. But God wants you to grow because your character grows while you wait. So, when you request and the timing and your character are all lined up, that is number four. When your request and the timing and the character are all lined up, God says, go and you receive your miracle. So God is interested with the time. He's interested with your character. He's also interested with the timing. When you run ahead of him, you miss out. Have you ever tried to imagine when the children of Israel were moving through the wilderness, and there was a crowd that used to read them. I just want you to imagine if there was one Mujuaji in the, in the congregation who said, I am not going today. And it's in the wilderness, there are no trees, there are no umbrellas, and the crowd is moving. Your guess is as good as mine, the consequences. So God wants you, your antenna, to be up. What is he saying? You will never skip any stage of life. You will repeat even no matter how old you are. You will keep on repeating because he's interested with your character. He knows that character will hold all the blessings together. 
He knows that when you have walked with him, even when you meet challenges, you will remember the God who saw me through last year, he will do it even this year. He's very interested. He wants you to mature up. He wants me to mature up. He wants you, you to know. For this purpose, he came. But terms and conditions are prime. That is why I started by saying salvation is the basic. Ephesians 6 verse 18 says, Pray in the spirit at all times and on every occasion. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers. You don't pray persistently because you are trying to convince God. You pray persistent so that you are ready when God says go. You keep on waiting, keep on waiting until God says go. And you know the timing of God. When the children of Israel were crossing the Red Sea, there was a green light, yet there was a sea in front of them. Green light, yet they were in the red. Deja ahead. And then there was green light. But because it was the green light of God, they walked on dry land. When it will be God's timing, you will walk irrespective of the season, irrespective of who is supporting you or not. God's vote for your life is enough. For this purpose, he came that you may enjoy life in abundance. But he has a demand on you. Did you know you can try and help somebody get a job in a certain institution because the person has got papers? But the retaining of the position will depend on the performance. Because, okay, now if you go and you had said this, your papers are saying you can do A, B, C, D. And then me as Alice Kemani have sent you there. And maybe because I knew the person there, you are given the opportunity. After all, you have the qualifications. I go back home, I leave you with your boss. But you are doing zero. God has an expectation. God wants you to perform. God wants to work on your character. God wants you to have patience, to have the fruit. God wants you to stop striving and start abiding. Because when you are bind, it's no longer your effort that will retain you on the vine. It is the vine responsibility. You will receive nutrients from the vine. Therefore, we don't keep praying Monday to Sunday to convince God as if you think. Let me just say this because he was my friend. I'm reminded of um, our late brother, Kenoti. He used to say, that when he's in a fix, he liked interacting with God in Kemeru. <laughs> he believed it's like at, he used to feel he can express himself better in Kemeru to God. You can express yourself, but God has no problem with English though. Neither has he a problem in Swahili or Kikuyu for that matter. He's interested with you because he's preparing you for heaven. Remember, I started by saying that when we receive Jesus, we receive a hope to keep us going. And that's why we sang in the song, words of hope. He gives us a hope. And as we persist in hope, he's preparing for us an eternal home. We, are all, we have come here this morning to be prepared for heaven. God is working on you and me for this purpose, to prepare you and me for his eternal home. And as I wind up, 1 John 3, 8 to 10, we read it in the Amplified Version and we'll be done. The one who practices sin, separating himself from God and offending him by acts of disobedience, indifference, or rebellion is of the devil and takes his inner character and moral values from him, not God. For the devil has sinned and violated God's law from the beginning. The Son of God appeared for this purpose, to destroy the works of the devil. Those things I've talked up there about, disobedience, indifference, rebellion. For this purpose, Jesus came to destroy those works. 
take, the devil wants to take your inner character, your moral values, and spoil them until you are not in terms with God. But for this purpose, Jesus came to make things right. And verse 9 says, No one who is born of God deliberately, knowingly, and habitually practices sin. Because God's seed, his principle of life, the essence of his righteous character remains permanently in him who is born again, who is reborn from above, spiritually transformed, renewed, and set apart for his purpose. And he who is born again cannot habitually live a life of characterized by sin because he is born of God and longs to praise God. This morning, do you long to praise God? Do you sin? Has it become a habit to sin against God? You are so intentional. Yani, your conscience does not prick you. You can do anything. It is so sad because up there, it is describing you that you belong to the devil. Because, and the Bible continues to say, that he who honors God, born of God, longs to praise God. And verse 10 finally says, by this the children of God and the children of the devil are clearly identified. Anyone who does not practice righteousness, who does not seek God's will in thought, action, and purpose is not of God. Nor is the one who does not unselfishly love his believing brother. I'm trying to say, for this purpose Jesus came, to give us life in abundance. We read in Luke 4.18, and Jesus enumerated why he came. He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me to do the following. To give us salvation, to give us freedom, to give us healing. And you are wondering why the, these things, they are encroaching in your life. I think this is a good place to check on your character. Because maybe that is why the word is not effective in your life. But thank God you are listening to me this morning. Because you make things right. You come to Jesus. Hear from him. Obey him. You will receive. Because for this purpose he came that you may receive salvation and live victoriously. So I don't know where you're finding yourself. Remember I've said, God sometimes will not answer for various reasons. Maybe he's looking at you. He looks at the agenda, he says no. He looks at you, you have refused to grow up. And he says, first of all, grow Go and grow up. He looks at the timing. He knows this is not right. He tells you slow. But when everything is right, he'll tell you go. So this morning, together with what you are saying, this is encroaching in your life. Can you tell Jesus, your word says, for this purpose you came. And then you do your part. Align yourself with the word of God. Words of hope. With open heart, allow the word to form you. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Because it's after we do this, we will bold reclaim that which is ours, and God will graciously give it to us. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we want to thank you because your word tells us that your promises are yea and amen. And this morning, dear Father, we come to you. We came because we want abundant life. But you have reminded us that you have a demand on us. How we pray that, Lord, you give us the grace that we will keep our bargain and then put you to task even to fulfill that for which you came for. We want to thank you for giving us an opportunity to align ourselves with your purposes that we may enjoy abundant life in this life and life eternal in the world to come. We honor you this morning. I want to pray for your sons and daughters this morning. They have heard your word. I pray that each one of us will pick that which is relevant to them. 
and be able to decode whether you are saying no, whether you are saying slow, whether you are saying grow, or you are saying go. This is our prayer this morning. We honor you, we bless you, for it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The Lord bless you.